This is Super Yacht News with Yves Sisman. Hi, welcome back to the channel. All right, so we've got a doozy for you tonight. Um, a, a yacht trying to flee arrest in, uh, in a European country, but we'll get into that in a minute. I just wanted to give you an update on motor yacht Nord first. So we talked about Nord in the previous videos. The vessel was in Hong Kong. Um, quite a high profile visit as it turned out. There's uh, people uh, getting upset about the fact that the, the uh, government in Hong Kong didn't want to arrest that vessel. Uh, the vessel then left and headed to uh, South Africa, a story that we broke on the channel here. And since the vessel has been heading down there, the mayor of uh, Cape Town and the premier of, of that province in South Africa, they've called for the vessel to be prevented from docking in, in, in South Africa. Now they, they, as I mentioned in the last video, they don't have control over the ports and it is down to the national government. So up until now, the, the national government hadn't said anything about this story, but they have come out and made a statement. And they said that, um, that they had no reason to apply the sanctions brought against the Russian owner of the yacht, Alexei Mordozhov. So uh, Vincent Magwenya, uh, who is the President Ramaphosa's spokesperson, he said in Pretoria on Tuesday that South Africa has no legal obligation to abide by sanctions imposed by the US and the EU. And he said that we have no reason to prevent their entry into South Africa. So that's the official stance of the African government, um, that the vessel will be allowed to arrive there. I also saw in another, in another article um, where they were actually advocating for Russian yachts to go there because they said they have the facilities to be able to maintain the vessel. So they're actually uh, actively seeking for vessels to go there for that reason. Uh, speaking of Motor Yacht Nord, um, the vessel has actually, uh, because of that spotlight I've said that's been on this vessel, and the vessel uh, headed through the Singapore Strait and through the Malacca Strait, and then it turned west into the you know in, in the Indian Ocean to head down towards South Africa and then as of 24 hours ago the vessel went dark so the vessel's AIS has stopped broadcasting for over 24 hours now now one point about that that is not something that um, you just switch off AIS you can restart an AIS unit but the unit is designed to be on all the time um, the only way to switch it off is to, um, you know, throw in some breakers or physically pulling cables out of the bottom of the unit. So that is a deliberate thing. Other vessels are very close to that vessel in the area. You may or may not know that uh, AIS is broadcast on VHF radio frequency and it is picked up by satellites. And that's how we receive satellite AIS tracking. So other vessels in that area are broadcasting their signals without issues. It's more, more likely that they've switched it off on purpose. Uh, the last known location of Motor Yacht Nord is currently on screen. Now, some might say that the vessel has done this uh, to protect themselves from the piracy. There is piracy in the Indian Ocean. However, the areas that they've just been through, the Singapore Strait and the Malacca Strait, there's more incidents of piracy in that area than there are in the area that they're currently in. Now, it's unlikely that uh, Alexei Mordozhov is on board. Very unlikely. Uh, based on my own experience, yacht owners very seldom travel on a vessel when it's going across an ocean. Uh, many reasons for that. Most of them don't actually like being at sea in rough weather. Also, you know, they're, they're working and it doesn't make it doesn't make sense for them uh, to spend that much time on the boat uh, when it's when it's transiting like that. But it does bring the question that where is the, why is the vessel uh, sailing across these oceans? Um, usually, only reason really a yacht is moving is because the owner wants the vessel to be somewhere. Um, and you know, if you wanted, if the vessel wanted to go somewhere in in uh, in Europe or to Turkey or something like that, it would have gone. It would be heading to Suez Canal and not around the Cape of Africa. So yeah, it, it's a bit of a question as to where the vessel's heading right now. Anyway, we'll keep you up to date on that when we know more. So we'll move on to the main story now. And this is about a $100 million yacht that we mentioned recently in a video that um, 
tried to flee arrest in Barcelona. The yacht is formerly known as Motor Yacht Valerie, and up until a couple of weeks ago, that was the name on the stern. The vessel's name changed then to Meridian A. Now, I had some trouble trying to figure out why this vessel's name had changed because I knew that they'd been arrested. I couldn't quite understand it. Um, it's unusual for a vessel to be allowed to do something like that when it's under arrest. The story behind this, you could make a movie out of this actually. So the vessel was uh, arrested in March and it's been in Barcelona ever since in the M MB92 uh, shipyard. And the, as I said in the previous video, the owner had stopped paying for upkeep of the vessel as soon as the vessel was arrested. So the vessel's just been sat there ever since. No idea who's paying the crew salaries, if that's the case. Uh, but obviously it still has a crew on board based on the actions that happened here recently. Uh, the vessel was moved recently. MB92 applied to have the vessel moved out of the shipyard to a vacant berth, obviously so they can continue working and doing the, the, the normal stuff that they do. And the vessel did move. I had a, a source told me that the, that Valerie was actually connected or Meridian A was connected to a, an external generator to run a power on the vessel. Now, the story is, is, is a bit confusing, so I'll try and uh, I'll try and lay it out for you. But according to the IMO database, the International Maritime Organization, the vessel is owned by Solberg Services Limited. And in actual fact, the management company, according to the IMO database again, is Royal, Royal Oceanic International Yacht Management Limited, which is based in Newcastle upon Tyne, which is in the UK. But there is another name, another company name that has been thrown about in some of the press reports that I've seen. So there's a little bit confusing, and this is exactly why they do it. So the vessel is owned like I said, officially by Solberg Services Limited. Now these companies, it's not like a company that has, um, you know, uh, makes coffee or something and then just happens to own a yacht. These companies are created, uh, they are shell companies, they have only one function and that is to be the owner of this yacht. Uh, and the owner of the yacht is obviously in the background, but it's done on purpose to hide the ownership, who the true owner is. So the, so the company's name is Big Services Limited, but there's another name called Amtec Worldwide Limited, which were both reported to be the owners of the yacht. And they probably both are connected in some way. One company is owned by another company, etc. And this is why they do it, to create confusion. Now, the company, which is called Amtec, they gave permission to another shell company, which is currently unknown, the name of that company. They gave permission to them to uh, run this yacht. It's, it's most likely the same people. It's just, it's just a movement on paper. And then they changed the name of the yacht from Valerie to Meridian A. Now, the crew on board then removed the old name, put up a temporary new name, probably with stickers, Remove the names off the sides of the boat, as you can see in this photograph. And then the management company, which applied for and was granted permission for the vessel to leave under the new name. Now, I don't know if that management company was Royal Oceanic Limited, International Limited in Newcastle upon Tyne. Uh, we did contact them. We have not had a reply as of yet. If we get a reply, I will bring that to you to see what they say. We've asked them for a statement, uh, but the management company uh, they asked for and received permission initially for the vessel to leave. Um, now, what the plan was apparently was to leave the EU, uh, to get out into international waters, and then to head to a friendly country. Now, what I believe mo most likely would have happened is that vessel was probably light on fuel. Uh, they certainly wouldn't have been allowed to fill up with fuel. I would, I would be very surprised if they were given uh, the permission to fill up with fuel. So they probably would have needed fuel. So they probably would have gone to South, uh, to North Africa somewhere and filled up and then probably headed to Turkey. The Port Authority grant, granted that uh, permission, but then they got wise and then they, they sort of figured out that, that it was the same boat, that it was under sanctions. And then the uh, Spanish Civil Guard, the police there, they went down and boarded that vessel and they prevented it from leaving. But I'm told that it was minutes away from leaving um, so they must have uh, disconnected the this generator that we mentioned gone on to their own generators 
got ready to uh, leave and then it was thwarted at the last minute. Now, I would be interested to know if the crew on board are British or if there is a British captain. Have, if anybody out there is watching who uh, has w recently worked on this vessel or has worked on it in the past, then you know who where the crew is from. I'd be, be really interested to find out that information. So if you could get in touch and let us know. But that is a really interesting story, isn't it? Um, and the idea that they, they thought that they would be able to leave like that is, is quite extraordinary. And they almost they were almost successful, it turns out. Uh, it does, um, the, the owner, um, Sergei Chemizov, he is ex-KGB and he's obviously close with Putin and who was also ex-KGB. And um, there was a story where they tried to do something similar back in when they were in the KGB and that, that plan also failed. But it seems like they might have gotten the idea from an old KGB plan. Very interesting. Very uh, James Bond stuff, isn't it? Anyway, I I'm going to leave it there. Uh, one thing, uh, we have a Patreon page now. So if you are interested in becoming a supporter of the channel, you can head over to Patreon. There is a link below and I'll put a link up in the top corner there. We have on the that Patreon page, we have exclusive stuff that is not available on the YouTube channel and there will be more stuff in the future. You'll also be able to uh, give uh, suggestions for new video topics for new videos in the future. And also when we do Q and A's, we will ask you for questions. So if you're interested in, in supporting the channel, head over to Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash eSysman. All right. As I said before, if you've got any information about these stories that we've done tonight or any other stories, please get in touch. You can get us on uh, the About page of the YouTube channel. You can get us on Instagram, on Facebook Messenger, and you can also get us on Threema. Be sure to like this video, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell for future notifications. All right, thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.